Well, Kira, thanks so much for chatting with us. Uh, such a pleasure to have you, especially after a week that we had Alessia too and got to kind of reminisce <laughs> about the Euros. We'll get there first though, okay. because we definitely want to talk Barcelona. Um, almost a full season here now. As we're looking, there's worse places to play, aren't definitely, there? So yeah, how's definitely. it been going? Yeah, really good. I think obviously the initial part, you know, it takes time to settle in. But I think after Christmas and yeah, training those few days when it was a smaller number, I think really helped me and yeah feeling really comfortable and really settled now and yeah looking forward to the business end of the season and the weather is uh, a bit different from manchester <laughs> just a little bit i think yeah i went home for one or two days last week and it was snowing and then i've come back here and it's sunny so yeah massive difference and yeah it's so nice and you get the best of the uh, i suppose of both worlds too now that you can actually go back yeah. home if you do want snow not sure how many people <laughs> yeah i don't think i do to be fair but yeah <laughs> <laughs> exactly but then now of course for, for city you had over 200 appearances you uh -huh. won so much mm -hmm. there we know how much you love city you said it time and time again when did you realize do you know what i kind of want a new challenge yeah i think for me it was probably not reaching you know those end stages of champions league and even qualifying for champions league at that point and then Obviously, when a, a club like Barcelona comes in, you know, it is very difficult to say no. And yeah, as you said, Man City is my, my home club. It's my childhood club. So it wasn't an easy decision. But yeah, as I said, when Barcelona comes knocking on the door, you can't really turn it down. And for me, the chance to play in Champions League football and win trophies was something that I couldn't say no to. And you know, we talked to a lot of the guys too. They talk so much about how it is such a transition coming from the other leagues in Europe to the Premier League. But then coming from the WSL now to here, did you find any difficulties, even though you, you are quite an experienced player already, like I said, with what you achieved at City? Yeah, I think the playing styles are a little bit different. And I think here in Spain it is a lot more tick, tick attacker. And yeah, for me, it took a little bit of time to get used to. And um, yeah, although City want to keep the ball, as I said, like being here, you have to constantly be on the move and everything goes through midfield. So there was a few slight changes, but I think like once I felt comfortable, you know, off the pitch and having my Spanish lessons and fitting in with the girls, I think, you know, on the pitch, it, it kind of soon follows after that. I remember there's an article um, a couple of years back and not too long ago where someone basically said you're just the woman version of Senio Busquets, um, <laughs> which is, I mean, great praise, of yeah, course, especially very now. Very good compliment, but I'm not sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel like that? Do you feel like now you're just living that kind of Catalan dream? Yeah, for sure. And I think Every midfielder wants to play for Barcelona. I think it's yeah. a, a kind of a midfielder's dream. You know, you grow up watching Xavi, Iniesta, Busquets, and yeah, to be here and to be a part of this club is amazing. And not just the men's players, but I speak about Patri, Aitana, and Alexia a lot. And I've not played with Alexia yet, but Patri and mm. Aitana are both unbelievable players. And yeah, learning off them every day and seeing how they play and trying to improve my game. So yeah, I'm really happy to be here. And as you said, like, of course, for a midfielder, this is this is the perfect club. And you did you have any, um, is this a style that you always wanted to play in though? Yeah, for sure. I think when I was younger, my dad always made me watch Spanish football and kind of appreciate that style. I think, you know, when I was younger, English teams, you know, tended to kick it a bit longer. And I think for me, my dad always appreciated the way Barcelona play and the way Spanish teams play. And I think he kind of tried to influence me in that way. So yeah, when I told him about Barcelona, I think even though he's a City fan as well, it was kind of a, a no brainer for both of us. And then now you've already won a trophy um, at Barcelona, which is, is it's just, it seems to be in the DNA here to, to win these trophies. You've got Champions Leagues also coming up. You've got El Clasico coming up as well. Um, mentally, has it been like a lot to take in? Or I suppose if you compare, you know, the mentality mm -hmm. of both of the clubs and, and, and just that kind of pressure to deliver time after time, how would you compare them? Um, I think for me, it's actually really exciting. I think being in in and around those games and those are the sort of games you want to be playing as a, as a professional and I think being here seeing the mentality of the staff and the players and the club I think you know they've reached Champions League final time after time but they don't rest on that they keep going and they want to win more trophies and for me that's something that I wanted to be a part of and I think obviously playing for Barcelona does carry its pressure it's such a prestigious club and you know wearing the shirt you know it does come with pressure but I think the more you get used to it and playing in those games, it, it does get a little bit easier. And obviously your teammates and staff are there to support you through it. And like you said, you've unfortunately not yet gotten to play with Alexia because of yeah. that horrible injury that she suffered. She is coming along though. Um, but it, it seems like you, you've still picked up where you've left off pretty much with or without her, even though we know everyone would be better with yeah. Alexia Puteas on the team. But um, has that surprised you when it came where there was almost no real not saying that you don't miss her, but there was no real massive void. Everyone just kind of literally picked up where, where you left off. 
Yeah, I think obviously we do really miss her on the pitch, and I think even in the when she's in the gym mm. and in and around the physio room, you can you can see what a, a special presence she is. I think she, you know, all the girls really look up to her. But um, for me, it wasn't a surprise because they have so many world class players, and I think I do speak about Patri a lot. But I think she does a lot of work that a lot of people don't notice. And yeah, for me, she kind of glues the team together and keeps the team ticking over and creating chances and assisting. And yeah, she does all the little jobs that I think maybe people don't notice sometimes. So mm. yeah, for me, it wasn't a surprise that she's moved a little bit higher up and Barcelona are still winning. I think, yeah, for me, it, it makes total sense. And then coming up, like I said, you have a couple of big matches. Um, few get bigger than El Clasico, uh, but that's a fixture that you guys have absolutely owned for mm -hmm. a while now. I suppose if you compare it, because you know we're getting ready to do the El Clasico on ESPN for the for the guys, um, for so our audience will know the rivalry there. You know, yeah. it does get quite feisty. From what you've experienced now, because you have one El Clasico under your belt, um, what's it like? Yeah, I mean, it definitely is feisty. <laughs> I think. The atmosphere in the change room before is definitely different. I think you can kind of see, mm. you know, the fight and the passion that the girls have for this game. And yeah, the first time I played at Real Madrid, you know, the, it, the first 45 minutes, it, it was tough and it was a bit cagey. And yeah, I mean, even in the, the Copa del Arena, it was still, I mean, we went down to 10 men, so it was a tough game. But yeah, for me, just playing in those games is unbelievable. And I've grown up watching it on TV and then to be able to feature in one, yeah, it's just incredible. It does sound pretty good. We're definitely excited for that one, especially with the, the world record crowds that we've been seeing. Is mm -hmm. that something that, you know, when you came and you knew that you were going to be a part of that, just it's hard to compare to what you saw as well at the Euros, but it's just been, I suppose, probably, would you say the best year that you've experienced in, in your career? Yeah, definitely. I think even when we play in like Tenerife and we go to different places, there's so many Barcelona fans and always supporting yeah. us. And even when there's only a small number of them, you can always hear them. And you know, the game at Spotify Camp Nou against Bayern, you know, the atmosphere was incredible. Probably one of the best I've played in and it wasn't even full. So, yeah, hopefully the later stage in the Champions League, we can fill the stadium, get all the fans there and, yeah, be unbelievable to be a part of it. Well, I hope you're not tired um, about talking about the Euros because we're going to have to touch on that right now. <laughs> I don't now. think I'll ever get tired to be there. <laughs> Thank goodness, because I was there and I'm not, I'm not even English. I'm not tired <laughs> talking about it. It probably was one of the best tournaments I know I have mm -hmm. covered. Um, a lot and it was is it still a pinch me kind of moment when you think of it has it properly been able to sink in yet honestly no I think <laughs> like every day I must watch like a video of was celebrating our pictures and like did we do that <laughs> yeah like Leah sent me some pictures through the other day that I've not seen before and just kind of looking at them and yeah it was really nice to reminisce but yeah for sure I don't think it's sunk in yet I know we spoke to um, Alessia and she was saying that it hasn't properly sunk in either for her because mm -hmm. In football, you guys even didn't, re didn't really have that much time no, to no, celebrate because yeah. it was straight back to clubs as well. And then you had more internationals to straight back to camps. And we know football just comes at you thick and fast. So, um, you know, was it hard to kind of focus after that? Yeah, definitely. I think I had, a, <laughs> I had a Champions League game like six or seven days later after the final. Like I had to be back in training. So, yeah, that wasn't easy. And obviously we did a little bit of partying after the game. So I think... As you should, a lot of goggles. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for, for me, like the, it was more mentally hard than physically, I think, mm. getting yourself away from the, the celebration and to then focus again in such a short space of time. And it is a long season. It, it is really hard. Um, mm. But yeah, unbelievable moment. And even thinking about it now just makes me smile. It was just being a part of that group of girls. And I think the, the national team camp after the, the Euros was probably one of the best I've been to. Like everyone was so excited to see each other. And, Obviously, after you win, you don't then have a lot of time to, to celebrate. Like, you have one day, two days, but it's been such a long tournament. So, I think when we then met, met back up uh, the month after, it was just, yeah, unbelievable. I was going to say, what was that first, um, I suppose, meeting, team meeting back like with Serena too? It was almost like, hey, coach, we yeah. did it. Can we, like, enjoy it a little bit before we get down to business? Yeah, I think, obviously, everyone was sat there smiling. But knowing Serena, it was pretty much, like, straight back to reviewing it and... <laughs> what we could do better next time and what we could improve oh. on, which just shows kind of what, what she's about and it's why she's a top manager and has won so many mm -hmm. massive competitions because she is so focused. But I think, yeah, there was obviously a lot of smiling going on and a lot of laughs before we had to get back down to business. What is she like on like a daily basis? Because I feel like she's such an enigma. She's almost like a Carlo Ancelotti, just really chill during these high pressure moments. And everyone wants to know, you know, does she at least let loose behind the scenes? Yeah, she definitely let loose in the changing room after we won. She just came in and started dancing. And I think everyone kind of stopped for a minute and was just looking and was like, is that Serena? But no, I think she is really chilled. And I think 
playing in those games while she's on the side, it, it makes a difference, you know, when you see someone so calm and she kind of just has a plan with everything that it really does resonate on the pitch. But yeah, I mean, off the pitch, she's so nice and always around the girls trying to have conversation. And I think for me, it's not just about football, like she wants to get to know you as a person, which I think, again, makes mm. such a difference and, and gives you a lot of confidence to play well. She's sort of like a, a not so secret weapon. Of course, everyone looks at the players yeah. on the pitch, but you know, uh, you almost underestimate what it's like having a great leader, obviously like Serena. And I remember um, again, when we were talking to Alessia, she said, unfortunately, she has to get drug tested after the final. Oh yeah, she did. And they were doing something, I think she was getting it and she saw on Sky, that um, when the girls were dancing In on the, the press table. the conference, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that yeah. top five favorite memories for you? Yeah, do you know what? When I think about it, I don't even know why we did it. Like, I think, <laughs> I think Mary was just like, "Shall we go in the press conference?" And Stand and Mary. Like, yeah, why not? And then obviously you see Mary on the table. But yeah, when I look back now, I just yeah, I don't really know what we were thinking to be honest. But yeah, it was unbelievable. Like a conga line going into the press conference. I think, I think it was Serena's face that made it for me. She looked so confused. I don't even think she said anything. But yeah, yeah. But you know what? You had to you had to let loose because I was covering you guys specifically throughout the tournament mm -hmm. and and uh, going to oh gosh, I can't even remember the hotel right there by Richmond. That it was that oh, you guys the were based, the Lensbury. Yeah. yeah, nice hotel. Lovely. Obviously yeah. very calm. And I think that that's how I would describe how you guys were and this is I came from covering also the men's euros and just seeing the unbelievable pressure I think the nation and of course the media put on the guys and and how it can actually sometimes have a negative effect and you know but with you guys I felt like you dealt with it in the most calm perfect way what do you put that down to is it that you just didn't turn anything on did you not feel the pressure because everyone had you as favorites from the start yeah, so it was something we definitely spoke about going into the tournament um, was that we, we didn't really want to let anything in our bubble, like mm. no social media, like if some of the girls go on Twitter, when they come to dinner, you're not allowed to speak about what's been mm. said on social media because some people might not want to know. And I think for me that, that definitely really helped. And obviously Serena, again, she shielded a lot of that pressure away from us. And I think it just really allowed us all to enjoy it. And when I think back now, every single day, everyone was having fun and, and having a laugh. And I think for a lot of us to play our best football that has to happen so yeah I think all of those kind of procedures were put in place before and all the plans that we, we had I think kind of took that pressure away obviously you know when you step out on the pit it, it, naturally there is going to be a bit of yeah. pressure because of the crowd but I think for us we all kind of just like made a promise that we were just going to enjoy it and once we got to the final we were there so there's no point worrying about the occasion because it's kind of what we'd set out to do so yeah. you know even the day before the game and when we was at Tottenham you know Spurs Lodge you wouldn't think that it was played in a European final yeah. the next day. Like we were sat around the campfire having a cup of tea and everyone was just ch chilling and relaxed. And yeah, for me, it was probably one of the best atmospheres I've been a part of. And then after that, I know you had, um, and then after that, I know you had the match against the USA, mm -hmm. uh, which I at least felt, we know what the USA has done, which I at least felt was probably one of the bigger, biggest tests that you were going to have. Yes, yeah. we know that you had overcome Germany as yeah, well, yeah, yeah. but just in terms of the world stage, it is the US women's national team you try to beat. Um, and he passed, literally with flying colours. <laughs> mm -hmm. And now everyone's like, for the World Cup, the Lionesses have to be the favourites. Do you feel like now the expectations are higher, that now maybe the playing field with the US has been levelled? Yeah, a little bit. But I think for us, you know, we can't forget they had some important players missing, um, the time of their season compared to ours. Um, so yes, yeah, Serena, you know, she never lets us get too carried away. And I think for us, we've still got work to do before going into the World Cup. But I think the mentality shift after the Euros, you could see that we were playing with a lot of confidence. Whereas before, I think when we played the US at She Believes, I think mm. we already thought they were going to win before the game or we didn't play like ourselves. Whereas I think you can really see, you know, how confident we are. And even in the way that we're playing, you know, we really believe in Serena's system and we've shown that it's worked. So I think, yeah, just keep going with that. But as I said, there's work to do, but for us, yeah, we're confident going into it, but we don't really speak about winning too much. I think that also is kind of what takes away the pressure is that we kind of just want to go there and again, make the nation proud in Australia and have all of our fans watching us and keep growing women's football. I think for us, that's the bigger picture than winning is, you know, taking women's football to the next step. And I mean, like I said, this is a World Cup year, as you mentioned. Um, it's a year where you've won the Euros, where you've beaten the US. You're going up against Brazil pretty soon, which many people still expect you to beat them there and this is Brazil and the yeah. US we've talked about. Um, expectations then for the World Cup, has it gotten to a point where now you've tasted the glory, nothing less but that trophy will do? Yeah, I think I think even before that, I think there's always an expectation on England anyways to go there and compete and win. But yeah, I think because we have 
had those celebrations and we've had that feeling of winning and I think nothing compares to that so for us obviously we're going to want to go there and have that feeling again and, and try and win but it was such a special moment at the Euros playing in front of friends and family I think you know I had 25 friends and family there and that's not usually the case for a tournament so to be able to celebrate with everyone afterwards it was so special but yeah I think for us we're confident going to Australia and obviously we want to go and, and try and win the World Cup. Well, we're going to be there, Kira, and we absolutely cannot wait uh, to see you guys out there tearing up the pitch, hopefully, um, and, and definitely just uh, making, I suppose, the rest of the world that's really fall in love with each and every one of your stories. So congratulations you. for all you've achieved this far, and we look forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.